This week you're going to create a bubble sort program. I'm doing a simple one with two parallel arrays. You're going to do very similar thing. You're just going to have four parallel arrays and a few more numbers. I've created an input file. My input file is called bubble and it has six ID numbers and six last names. Now this is associated where Smith is 723, Adams is 952, Rogers is 643 because they're parallel arrays. So let's start, this should be a bit of a review, with creating and loading the arrays. So we use the make array statement, we have it set up to hold a maximum of six, and we've named it ID. We have the make array named last name, six, we've created a temp ID, which we'll need for a bubble sort, and that will hold a temporary ID value. We've created a temporary last name value, which I've initialized to quote, quote, which is just initializing it to null so there's no garbage in there. I'm going to run two for loops in a row to input the ID and the last name. Then we're going to do a bubble sort. And a bubble sort, sort is going to need an inner and an outer loop. And each loop needs to be one less than the number of values in the array. So since it's a six index array, we need to go through the loop five times, which we're doing in the standard programming format of zero to four. Zero, one, two, three, four. That's our five times through the array. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare, and we've got the outer loop set as O, the inner loop set with a variable C. The, this outer loop O only gets used in our output as far as a variable. We're just trying to force it to go through this loop five times. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare the ID of index value C to the ID of index value C plus one. So that, and if it's greater than, we're going to change them. So we'll store the value that's in ID index C inside of the um, temp ID. We'll ch have temp last name store the value in index C of last name. Then we'll make ID C equal ID C plus one. Last name C equal last name C plus one. ID C plus one equal temp ID and last name C plus one equal temp ID. So really what we're doing is we're just flipping the locations. So let's look at our values here. That means if we check 723 and 952, if 952 is less than 723, they'll switch. Well that doesn't happen. Then it's going to check with 952 and 643. If 643 is less, so then it will switch. And the way I've done this is to show you how it switches with each one. I've done an output for each time it goes through the outer loop. We're not going to flip it for each one through the inner loop. That would get a little confusing, but we'll go through the whole swapping five times. And it will display our output and the order five times. At the end, we're going to do output to the bubble out dot text file and I'll show you that. Okay, so let's run this. Now on my display where I'm adding, when I show you the, when I am having it display the outer loop number, I'm having to do zero plus one in parentheses. If you don't, it just puts O plus one so it becomes zero one eleven 21, it actually just concatenates them like strings. If you put them in parentheses, it actually adds because it, well, I want it to count like it's going through first time, second time, third time. Now this is not the zero time because we're starting at zero with 723. Let's run this, bring it up, bring up the initial values. Oops, that's the end values. Bring up the initial values. Okay, so that before we begin, Our file starts in the order of 723, 952, 643, 564, 200, and 102. 
Now you'll notice as we go through, the heavier numbers start to drop down, or the larger numbers start to fall down to the bottom, and the smaller numbers start to rise to the top. So you can see 102 is starting its climb up to the top, and 952 has actually sunk all the way to the bottom. And you'll notice it stays aligned with the proper last name. They'll sort with it. The next time through, 102 is getting closer to the top, 723 has fallen down. And each time we go through the loop, it changes a little. And by the last time we go through the loop, it should be in the right order. Where 102 is the smallest number, 952 is the largest, and every number in between is in order. And that's why it's called a bubble sort, because the smaller or lighter numbers will float to the top each time through the loop, and the larger numbers will sink to the bottom. So by the time we've gone through the outer loop five times, and we've actually gone through the inter inner loop 25 times, because it goes through five times for each one, we have sorted things so that they're in ascending order. And then we will get the output file with everything in order and neatly formatted. So that's what you're going to do. I'm going to give you a file. Now the most important thing to remember with these files is that they have to be in the same folder as the actual executable which is right here, my actual application file. The application file and your in and out files are in the same folder. So I've got my visual logic file, my bubble file, which is my in, and my bubble out file right here, that's my output file. They have to be at the same level in the same file folder as your visual logic application file for this to work. So it's a little complex. You'll be doing one based off of this. You'll have 10 different values. You'll also have first names and addresses to sort. So it's going to be a little more complex, but the logic's exactly the same.